Hello, welcome to video six, where we put demand and supply together and show equilibrium, price and quantity. So, video six, equilibrium, price and quantity in a market. We've learned what demand curves are and supply curves are. We know demand curves slope downwards and supply curves slope upwards. Well, if we put those two together, we get uh, a point, one point, where demand equals su supply. And that's here. And that gives us the equilibrium price, I've labelled it P1, and the equilibrium quantity Q1. This is the only price in this market where demand equals supply. And if left to market forces, this is the price which will be established in the market. It is the only price where there are no consumers willing to buy the good but can't find the good and there is no suppliers willing to supply the good and yet unable to find someone to buy it. All the supply is sold and all of the demand is satisfied. We say the market clears. It's called the market clearing price as well as being called the equilibrium price. And it only happens at P1 as you can see. And the equilibrium quantity is Q1. That's the amount that will be sold. So at this price, everyone who wishes to buy the good can buy the good. And yet there is none left over where suppliers cannot sell the good. All the goods that are being supplied are sold and all the demand is satisfied. Now that wouldn't be the case were the price at any other level. So let's explore that. Imagine that the price was at P2, up here, P2. If the price were at P2, you can see at price P2, there is this much quantity demanded and this much quantity supplied. There is a huge gap between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. At price P2, far more is being supplied than is being demanded and this will lead to excess supply in the market. This much excess supply. It's an amount, Q2, Q3. It's an amount of excess supply. Suppliers have produced this because they're attracted by the high price P2, but they can't sell Q2, Q3. This will cause them to lower their price. And as the price falls, more is demanded uh, until everything is sold at price P1. We see this happening when clothes shops put goods on sale. They lower the price because they haven't been able to sell the products, the clothes, uh, and to get rid of their excess supply. Perhaps supermarkets close to the sell-by date of certain food start lowering the price in order to sell the good. So this is excess supply occurring when the price is too high. If the price had been too low, let me, let me just rub that out. If the price had been too low, um, we would have had a situation where uh, there is excess demand. At the price being here, P2, you can see that the quantity supplied is only this much, but the quantity demanded was greater. Excess demand. There is more demand than supply in amount Q2, Q3 of excess demand, and this will cause the price to be driven up. It might be driven up in the hidden economy. Uh, imagine a popular concert or theatre production or a big sports event. Um, the, the, the tickets might, get, uh, might have a face value, but there's so much demand, the price might be driven up through, uh, through clever economists, also called ticket touts, who understand the concept of excess demand. I once paid £22 uh, for a ticket for a football match between West Ham and Manchester United. Um, the ticket had nine pounds written on it. I bought the ticket 10 minutes before the game started and I paid 22 pounds. That was about 15 years ago. More than double the face value of the, uh, of the ticket, but the, the, the person who bought the ticket understood the concept of excess demand, although I don't think he had any degree in economics. And he was standing outside West Ham United's football ground at Upton Park and he was selling this ticket for me for £22, making a healthy profit, I'm sure. He exploited the concept of excess demand. Well, why didn't uh, the, football, uh, the football club, West Ham, why didn't they 
priced their ticket initially at £22. They weren't sure that they would be able to sell the ticket there. So they had their ticket pricing policy and it came up as £9, but they had misjudged it and there was excess demand. And people like myself were paying the higher price, driving the price up to the true equilibrium price. They had had £9, but there was excess demand at £9. And in fact, the equilibrium was probably about £22 in that example. So excess demand will exist when the price is too low. Excess supply will exist when the price is too high. And market forces pull and push the price towards the equilibrium and the equilibrium is found by the market forces that are acting in the market. Let's move on and um, look at some examples of, of uh, how price can, can be um, established and how price can change when one of the curves, the demand or the supply, is affected. Take a look at this example, the market for tomato ketchup. What happens to the price and quantity of ketchup when there is a successful marketing campaign for mustard? You see, we explored in previous videos how demand or supply can change, and that causes a shift in the entire curve, either the D curve or the S curve. Let's have a look at this one. Here's the market for ketchup. There's the supply curve. There's the demand curve, there's the price and the quantity, equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. Now, something is going to change in this market. It could be affecting demand, it could be affecting supply, and it could be increasing and it could be decreasing the demand or the supply. This is the market for ketchup, but we're told there's been a successful marketing campaign for mustard. What's likely to happen? Can you work it out? in the market for ketchup. Well, mustard is of course a substitute for ketchup. And we'll explore what that means in a later video, but I think you've got the idea. And if a successful marketing campaign happens for mustard, it's going to mean more consumers buying mustard. That might reduce, at every price, the demand for ketchup, an alternative to mustard. So, we are likely to see a fall in demand. As demand falls, you can see there is a new equilibrium point here. Price falls to P2 and quantity falls to Q2. Okay, so I'm going to go back to an earlier diagram I want to um, here and uh, let me just uh, clean this up again and we can explore that again in the, in the ketchup market. In the ketchup market, what happened was, because of the successful demand for uh, mustard, the successful ma uh, advertising marketing campaign for mustard, the demand for ketchup fell. Now look what happens. We say there has been a fall in demand for ketchup. This is the new equilibrium point. A new price, P2. A new quantity, Q2. Has supply changed? No. Quantity supplied has changed as a result of the falling demand. When demand fell, less is now bought and sold. Because the price fell, suppliers changed their quantity supplied. There is no change in supply, the supply curve has not changed, but from the supplier's point of view, there's been a change in the price, and that's caused the suppliers to reduce the quantity supplied. We've moved along the supply curve. As the demand curve shifted inwards, the equilibrium point moved from here to here, and we've moved along the supply curve to here, reducing the quantity supplied. So there's been a fall in demand, causing the price to fall, causing a fall in quantity supplied. You've got to get the terminology right. Because some people, some of you may think, hang on, the price has just fallen, so why don't people buy more ketchup? No, the price has fallen as a consequence of the fall in the demand for ketchup. 
That's why the price fell. You've got to get the cause and the consequence the right way around. The cause was of what happened here, the cause is a fall in demand. It made the price fall. So, so they won't turn around now and say, oh, let's buy more ketchup, it's cheaper. No. The falling price was the consequence, the outcome of the drop in demand, which itself was caused by more people wanting to buy mustard. Should we look at another example? The market for housing. What happens to price and quantity when the government passes a law raising safety standards on building sites? The market for housing. We start with a single equilibrium point. P1, Q1 are the equilibrium price and quantity. Now, what happens to price and quantity when the government passes a law raising safety standards on building sites? If the government passes a law raising safety standards on building sites, is that going to affect demand or supply? It's certainly going to affect supply. It's going to raise costs of production for building firms. They're going to have to pay more costs as they make their building sites safer. But we've learned that rising costs of production affect the willingness of suppliers to supply. And it's going to affect the willingness of building companies to build houses. And it's going to reduce supply. Rising costs of production reduce supply. Can you remember which way supply curves must shift to show a reduction in supply? It's like this. That's a, that's a fall in supply, a decrease in supply. Now, the equilibrium point is here. Price P2, quantity Q2. Less houses are sold, and they are sold at higher prices. Note, in this example, demand did not change. The thing that happened was a supply-side event. There was a supply-side shock, as rising costs of production had their effect. And it pushed the price up, and when the price went up, there was a fall in quantity demanded. We moved along the demand curve. The fall in supply caused a movement along the demand curve. Finally, let me give you one more example. The market for Apple iPhones. And I've got three situations for you to think about. One, two, three. Three separate questions, if you like. You can draw yourself a demand and supply curve with a single equilibrium point as your starting point, and you can consider how each of these events would individually affect the equilibrium price and quantity on that diagram. First of all, decide, is that a demand side event or a supply side event? Is it affecting the consumers and their willingness to demand, or is it affecting the suppliers? It's the market for iPhones. Is it affecting the, the people who might buy an iPhone, or is it affecting, on the supply side, the producers of the iPhone, Apple? Secondly, after you've decided whether it's demand or supply side uh, event, you, you then have to decide, is it increasing or decreasing? So I'm going to pause now while you look at that. If you wish to try and do this before I give the answer, pause your video now. and. Uh, and, uh, and, and then restart it when, you're, when you think you've got your answers. Okay, let's look at the answers. The first one, what happens to price and quantity when incomes rise across the EU and the USA? It's going to affect the demand side, and it's going to make it possible for more people to buy these phones, and that's definitely going to shift the demand curve outwards. It's an increase in demand. So the demand curve will shift outwards, and that is going to lead to higher quantity and a higher price. Okay, I haven't got much room here, but let me, let me switch back to this other um, diagram. Let me just clean this up a little bit again. And, uh, and, and we can show you, so when the, the incomes rise, consumers have more income, it's going to shift the demand curve outwards and and that's going to raise both quantity and price. The, the, the demand rising has raised the price, the rise in the price has caused an increase in quantity supply. We've gone from this point to this point, we've moved along the supply curve here, from there to there, 
and that's increased both quantity and price. Okay, right, let's look at the second iPhone question. What happens to equilibrium price and quantity when in China, where iPhones are made, the Chinese currency appreciates and workers get a pay rise? Two things happening, but it's happening on the supply side. If the currency appreciates, it becomes more expensive for Westerners to buy these goods from China. Secondly, if the workers in the iPhone factories get a pay rise, it's going to raise costs of production. Both of these things happen on the supply side. They're both raising the costs of production, or the, the, and they're going to both uh, shift the supply curve inwards, a decrease in supply, it's going to make the price go up, and it's going to make quantity fall. Finally, the third one. When doctors reveal using mobile phones is harmful to health, that's going to affect demand, and it's going to reduce demand. Demand curve will shift inwards. We're going to have a lower price, a lower quantity, and uh, the supply is unaffected, but there will be a reduction in quantity supplied. Price falls, quantity falls. Okay, so some examples of shifting demand curves, shifting supply curves in markets, leading to new equilibrium prices. In the next video, video 7, we'll, we'll, we'll take this a little further by looking at this, why this is happening. Uh, and, and, and that is a study of the price mechanism, the very heart of, of economics. How the equilibrium price is found and why that's a, a, a preferable system whenever we can trust it to work. Okay, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.